Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you this morning uh, because we are going to talk about things that a personal injury lawyer would never do. <laughs> there's, there's quite a few. And I'm guessing it comes from experience. Yes, yes, it certainly does. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is walking over any type of manhole or grate. <laughs> we have had, I would say, gosh, more, more cases than I would like to see of um, individuals walking over a manhole or grate that gives way or that slips and either a portion of their body or their whole body goes into it. The injuries are always nasty. If you see one of those on the street, steer clear. I, I mean, I've seen them in people's yards, in their backyards, wow. and we've had people that have gone for a picnic and have been, you know, either playing or out in the backyard and that manhole cover flips and usually all the way down, you know, past the knee, all the way to the hip. Right. Um, you know, bad knee injuries, bad hip injuries. So, yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> Don't walk over manhole covers. Yeah, steer clear. I, the other thing that comes to mind is um, group fitness classes. Now, that might seem a little odd, but we have had so many clients come to us and say, I signed up for one of these group fitness classes and I pulled something. Oh, man. And for whatever reason, that seems to be a common theme that I see over and over again. So that's my recommendation to not do that. <laughs> the other problem with fitness classes generally is you have to sign a waiver. Yep. Yep. And and I don't want to discourage people from calling us thinking they signed a waiver because there are some ways around it, but it does present a hurdle. Yes. Yeah. Anytime you're in a in a, a workout facility or a gym, generally the membership includes some kind of waiver but yeah absolutely uh you know injuries from uh, from workouts right it requires some creative lawyering to potentially get out of some of those contracts which we have been successful on but it's definitely case dependent i can think of one where we had a client that was severely burned in uh the in sauna, a sauna. Uh, because it was not set up properly and we recovered on that case. Yes. I can think of a couple where the, uh, the exercise equipment, either a cable broke or was not in working order and caused injury. So you can't waive uh, negligence. You, right. can't, you have to have a safe place to work right. out. But if you just hurt yourself in the normal course of exercise, that waiver is probably going to apply. Yeah. And the gym case kind of gets to my next things I would never do as a PI lawyer, sit in a shower chair that's attached to the wall uh, instead of, you know, a, a bench that's that's built in. We have had so many cases of individuals that will pull one down and they break. Um, I don't know if there's uh, they're using contractors that are not regulated or what happens there but even oftentimes it's not weight based it's just that the way that they're assembled is not good yeah, <laughs> we've had a couple of those cases um in fact i i've been in hotel rooms where they gave me a handicapped accessible might have been the last one and i'm always looking at the chair right i'm not a big person i wouldn't sit in that chair because it doesn't look like it would hold me uh, yeah, I, I think that a lot of times um, there's some sort of issues with how they're connected and we'll see pictures of them off the wall and they're not properly um, properly attached and it can it can cause bad injuries. That one I know you're referring to, uh, whoever installed the chair literally just drilled some holes into the wall, uh, you know, not into studs, not into anything that would support the weight and one of our clients sat on it and it ripped right out of the wall and she went forward knees shoulders face that was a, a bad injury yeah and and she was um you know she had physical limitations before right right and i think i remember her you know struggling and being incapacitated in that shower until somebody found terrifying because you have the water going i i can't even imagine um i i think this one's pretty straightforward but people still do it um, I would never, as a PI lawyer, ride any sort of motorcycle or bike without a helmet. There are just so many cases that we have had with individuals that were in pretty catastrophic accidents, and I think that some of their injury could have been minimized by a helmet. Yeah, it seems like a no-brainer, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, why somebody would ride a motorcycle without a helmet just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right, right. I know a lot of people want the wind blowing in their hair, but... Uh, it's, it's not worth a potential injury no. by any means. Um, and of course, we always say this too, as a personal injury lawyer, I would always say, never agree to the minimum state limits. 
always try to get as as uh, high a coverage as you can afford. Yeah, that brings up a good point. Let me uh, explain it a little bit. Is um, in most states and in Illinois, you have to have car insurance, um, but there's a minimum. You have to have at least twenty five thousand dollars worth of insurance. Um, you can have more than that. Um, too many of our clients don't realize what the limits are until the accident happens. They just want the cheapest coverage possible. Right. And um, how many clients have we had to sit at across from our desk and say, you know, I'm sorry, Mrs. Johnson, your husband was killed by a drunk driver, but there's only $25,000 worth of insurance. And too many, too many, I would say. I feel like, unfortunately, we have to have difficult conversations like that on a pretty weekly basis. One of the most difficult cases of my career was an individual that was killed in a minimum state or a state minimum vehicle with two other passengers. Mm. So it was 50,000 per occurrence that had to be split three ways. Fortunately, he had nine kids. So it was splitting a third of 50,000 nine ways. And it was an incredibly difficult and sad situation. Unfortunately, the vehicle was underinsured and he did not have additional coverage. Yeah, so one of the things that we try to tell our clients when they come in after the fact, right. after we've already told them, sorry, your injury is very serious, but there's not enough insurance, is go out immediately and get at least $100,000, maybe $250,000, because if you get hit with somebody that's got the state minimum, but you've got 250000 your insurance company will make up the difference. Exactly. Um, and, and listen, let's face it, you know, there's a lot of people that are driving with no insurance out there. That's so true. That's so true. And I, I think that a lot of people don't realize that that coverage exists to protect them as well. Mm -hmm. I think that probably insurance brokers say, well, you know, this coverage is if you hit somebody, but they don't turn around and acknowledge that it also protects you if you yourself are injured. And then here's another interesting comment. We could talk about insurance all day, <laughs> but uh, car insurance covers everyone in the, in the household. You know, not just the mom and the dad who are on the policy, but covers any family member in the same household. Right. Well, why is that, Mr. McCready? Well, if you've got a 12-year-old son who can't be on the insurance policy and he's on his bicycle and gets hit by an uninsured motorist, yes, of course, your insurance is going to cover him. Right, right. And I think that another thing that people forget to realize, we have a case now of a ATV and he was under the impression that it would be covered under his existing auto policy and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. There was an exclusion. So with any type of motorized vehicle, you need to contact your insurance agent and make sure that they're covered. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're in a really tough position if you're injured. I had a, I had a case where a guy was driving his lawnmower down the street. I don't know why or where he was going and got hit by an uninsured motorist. But, it, but his insurance didn't cover it Yeah, because he was on the road, right? Oh. He was driving it on the road. Now, we don't take, well, it's atypical that we take these types of cases. But the other um, things I wouldn't do as a personal injury lawyer is help a friend move for pizza or beer <laughs> or agree to do any sort of landscaping, tree trimming, bush trimming. It doesn't go over well. Don't do it for pizza and beer. It's not worth the injury. Um, tell them, hey, hire somebody. I'm, I'm going to keep my spine and my discs unherniated. <laughs> how many, how many, how many cases have we had people climbing up ladders? Oh, so many, too many. On the roof, on a tree, and helping out a buddy, and then the the ladder collapses, and yeah, it causes nothing but ill will. Yeah, yeah, and I I think another pivot of what um, I have seen as well is, and I of course recommend this to all the clients: make sure when you're walking not to text and walk. We've had quite a few clients even in stores that have potentially injured themselves because they ran into something while texting or, God forbid, run into traffic while texting. Keep, uh, keep some vigilance. So my, uh, my kids at a, a certain point were into Pokemon Go. Oh, yeah. And they're watching their phone and trying to catch these Pokemons and uh, just a recipe for possibly getting injured. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. So keep your... Keep your uh, eyes open and your ears, you know, listening for anything else that you could potentially avoid. Um, the last thing that I could think of as far as things I avoid as a PI lawyer is um, walking through an aisle while there's some 
stocking going on or you know large sale moving we've had some cases of clients walking through home depot or walmart or large stores where they're doing um either shelving or something of that nature and something has fallen on the client uh, so it's never worth it Go, come back to that aisle maybe when they're done or or even say hey can you stop that while i can finish my shopping uh falling merchandise is a pretty common event yeah. in fact there's a a very large retailer who will remain nameless who says the prices are falling. Well, oftentimes there's things other than falling <laughs> than the prices. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Um, I will add one more to your list, which I thought was outstanding, is uh, when I'm driving or when anybody's driving and you're waiting to take a left-hand turn mm. and there's someone waiting to take a left-hand turn the opposite way and you can't see the oncoming traffic. Yes. How many left-hand turns have we handled? Oh, dozens so and many. dozens. You need to wait for that left-hand turn until you're absolutely clear that there's no traffic coming the other way. Yeah, yeah. Um, even to the extent we have people waiting to take a left-hand turn, the light turns red, they begin their turn, and the other person runs the red light. Yes. But you know what? Even running the red light, they've got the right of way. Right. You have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. So as a personal injury lawyer, you know, I don't care if people are beeping at me to turn left. I'm not turning left until it's 100% not safe. Not worth it. Don't succumb to the peer pressure of other drivers. No, no. <laughs> Look out for yourself. No, and forget about road rage. Oh, Stay away. Yeah, yeah, it's somewhere. So, Jess, another thing that I would never do as, a, as an attorney, um, or I try not to do, is drive in a truck's blind spot. You yes. know, driving next to these semi-trucks. Um, how many cases have we had where the semi drifts into our client's lane? Quite a few, quite a few. And there are, you know, certainly a lot of times with these trucking cases that we have, we'll find out in litigation that the driver was, you know, 18 to 12 hours on the road without a break. Um, or they're distracted or they're meeting a specific deadline. You know, there's so much that comes into play. And oftentimes with those large vehicles, they don't necessarily know that they're drifting into your lane and they can't see you. Right, right. Yeah, we have quite a few cases also of um, clients where a semi-truck is turning from a outer lane and the client doesn't know that they're going to turn around them. And that causes quite a few collisions as well. So if you see one of those larger vehicles on the road, I usually will stay away from them. Me too. Yeah. Um, the other one that I think we typically will see, too, is injuries when a client's on the side of the road trying to change a flat tire or maybe ran out of gas. Um, and those injuries can be typically pretty catastrophic as well. You so know, it's usually on a highway. Right. And you've got other vehicles that are going 55, wink, wink, right. 70, 75, and either clip the side of the vehicle or rear end the vehicle. Yeah, we've had some very, very serious injuries um, on the side of the road. Yeah, and you know, they say nowadays, especially when you're driving on the side of the road, or not on the side of the road, but when you're driving, oftentimes, if you do see an animal in the road, now a lot of neurosurgeons and uh, doctors are saying that you should unfortunately hit the animal as opposed to drive off the side of the road because you potentially could further injure yourself have you seen those types of cases where i have i have right um you know over the last uh, 10 years or so there's been a lot of discussion about uh, self-driving vehicles autonomous vehicles and one of the fascinating things that i've always um, loved is that that computer brain and those algorithms that are driving that car autonomously are programmed to make certain decisions. So for example, if there is one person in the road and there are 10 people on a sidewalk, what does the car do? Does the car hit the person in the road to avoid hitting the 10 people on the sidewalk? Does the car default to always avoiding someone in the road? Those computer autonomous vehicles are programmed to make those decisions. Right. Um, how would I make that decision? How would you make that decision? It's not your decision anymore when you've got an autonomous vehicle. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's interesting to see how the technology will evolve over time. Um, there's been some discussions as far as whether it will affect the personal injury you know, realm as far as a big source of our business, of course, is negligent driving. And they would argue that you know, self-driving vehicles, the 
how can you sue a computer? How can you sue a company? And I think that it's just important for personal injury lawyers and when you pick a lawyer to find a firm that's evolved in the market and is constantly looking and seeing and being creative as far as what types of, cause of causes of action you can bring. You know, some of the creative things that we do is not in every case, but in certain cases, is we can access the black box. Right. Most cars um, after 2015, 16 are, are, are equipped with these black boxes, which give you all sorts of data. Um, what about uh, our experience with um, uh, speed light cameras and the cameras, especially in the city of Chicago? Yeah, we're incredibly aggressive when we sign up a file to get all available video footage, whether it be body cams, whether it be red light cameras, um, anything that we can do to help support our client's case. And we've had some success getting cameras from private businesses. Mm -hmm. If you're injured outside a store that might have a camera, we've been aggressive on getting those as well. Right. Uh, doorbell ring cameras. Yes. Um, you know, we have had the opportunity where, you know, I can't think of one that actually picked up what we wanted, but neighbors had these ring cams. They were more than willing to share what they saw on it, but we haven't had any uh, slam dunks yet. I'm really interested to see over time what will happen with drones as far as if they're starting to be used for larger companies deliveries and things like that. If there's going to be a level of user error in operating the drones and also what type of effect they can have with potentially injuring someone. Yeah, certainly, certainly. And as computers make more and more decisions uh, and taking it out of the decision making or even the operation of a human. Those are legitimate legal concerns. Yeah. Well, those are all really good ideas, Jess. Well, thank and, you. Uh, and if people listen to you and I, I think that uh, the world would be a safer place. I hope so. <laughs> but we'd be having less clients. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, thanks, Jess. Thank you for having me.